Well, I'm Carrie Swanson. I'm the Ag Agent in Albemarle County, and we're here today to talk a little bit about spotted lanternfly and also its favorite host, the Tree of Heaven or the Alanthus tree. One of the more common questions that I'm getting right now, um, we got our first sighting of spotted lanternfly last year in Albemarle County and folks are very gung-ho to help with the effort to control spotted lanternfly and what we can you know help slow the spread right now is controlling the tree of heaven and so that's what we're going to focus on today is the steps that you can take to control tree of heaven on your property which is an invasive tree and the favorite host of spotted lanternfly. Hi my name is Adam Downing I'm the extension forestry agent for Virginia Cooperative Extension's Northwest District and I'm excited to be with you today to talk about tree of heaven and how to kill it. Okay so why are we focused in on tree of heaven with regard to the spotted lanternfly? Well the spotted lanternfly is just the latest reason to have an interest in tree of heaven. It's also a preferred host for the brown monterey distinct bug which is another non-native pest and this tree actually came into North America by way of Philadelphia and a port near there in 1784. Coincidentally, or maybe not, uh, that's also where the spotted lanternfly was, uh, was first found in North America, was in southeastern Pennsylvania. So Tree of Heaven is a non-native invasive. It uh, likes these road uh, edges. Um, it doesn't grow well in full shade, but it will grow well in full sun. But let's talk about the identification characteristics. If I break off this twig, we have a terminal bud here that's pretty nondescript, inconspicuous. The twig itself is smooth, and this is the, the leaf, okay? It's a compound leaf. So each of the, one of these leaflets, and one of the unique characteristics of this leaf versus other compound leaves is that the base of each leaflet is this little tooth, and on the back side is actually a little gland. But one of the best characteristics to identify this tree is the smell. In fact, some people call it stink tree. You also hear it called Schumach, um, Tree of Heaven, Alanthus altissima. Mostly we refer to it as Alanthus, which is the genus. Another identification characteristic is the bark of trees. And Alanthus altissima has a pretty gray bark, um, more gray than brown or tan, like most of our other uh, native trees. Generally speaking, the, the um, smaller stems will have very tight bark, maybe a little bit of yellowish hue to it. And then as the tree gets a little bit of size, there's a texture, but it remains tight. Even two foot diameter trees will have this, uh, this tight bark. Okay, one last identification characteristic uh, is determined between male and female plants, which can be useful if you have female plants and male plants, that would be a place to start with the females because they actually produce seed. What we have behind us here are all male plants. There are no seed heads on these. If we swing over to the far side of the field, here you can see a female tree with the seed heads. When it comes to control options, we've got sort of uh, three options, but really only one that is effective and available to us now. Mechanical, I'll talk a little bit about that. Biological, there's some good news on the horizon, but it's not quite here yet. And chemical, and that's where we're gonna spend most of our time with applying the right kind of herbicide and the right method to kill just tree of heaven. So when we talk about mechanical, the problem with mechanical is if you're cutting anything, uh, it will sprout right back. And we'll see some evidence of that here uh, in a little bit. We have a, a seedling. We believe this is a seedling here and not an uncommon place. So we can't really spray this very easily because the spray would go off here. Um, and if it's a seedling, the whole root system should come out. The soil is moist. If it's not a seedling, it'll break. But even this being a large seedling, it may also break. So I'm just gonna grab a hold of that down low and pull very slowly. And it's actually feeling pretty good, just like pulling a weed in a garden. And that actually worked. So we've got most of the root system here. This will probably be a successful mechanical um, control method for this particular plant. The good news on the biological front is that Virginia Tech and some surrounding states have been involved in some research that, where they have found a naturally occur, occurring verticillium wilt. It's called verticillium non-alfalfa. And it is actually very effective at clogging the vessels of Alanthus trees and kills the root system as well. It's under review right now at the EPA to be a biological herbicide that is available commercially. So it's going to be some time before that's available. Um, but it is on the landscape in places and is uh, doing a good job. So 
while we're waiting for that to be more available and more widespread, our options really are chemical. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the chemical options. In terms of pesticides, we're only talking about herbicides here, not insecticides, not fungicides. Herbicides are specific to plants. And so we have several herbicide options here, but before we get into that, I'm gonna talk about timing and personal protective equipment. First of all, let's talk about timing. The best time of year to apply herbicides for woody plants to include Alanthus or Tree of Heaven is right now in the mid to late summer when the tree is actively growing, carrying fluids up and down the tree so that the chemistry is carried down into the root system. That's really what we need to kill is that root system. And secondly, PPE. Got these gloves on now because I'm gonna be touching some jugs. That's one of the PPE or personal protective equipment uh, aspects, long sleeves, long pants, boots, and shoes. All of that, by the way, is on the label. The label is quite literally the law, even if you are only applying this on your own property for, for personal reasons. You do need to follow the label. It tells you the personal protective equipment. It tells you what kind of concentrations you can mix this in, if you can use it as a full strength and, and even different application methods, such as cut stump and hack and squirt, which we're going to demonstrate in a little bit. Let's talk about the specific chemical recommendations for uh, Alanthus control. The two primary types of herbicides that we're going to use for Tree of Heaven control are glyphosate. It's commonly known as Roundup, but there are many brands and you don't need to buy a brand name. This is a generic brand. And the other type of herbicide that we will use is triclopyr. There are two different types of triclopyr. In this case, the brand is Garlon, but there are, again are many off brands and they're just as effective. And uh, one of these is a triclopyr amine, which is mixed with water. And the other is a triclopyr ester, which is mixed with some sort of oil. And that presents some different application uh, method opportunities. Glyphosate is something that a lot of people may have around. It may not be what you have in your garage or shed may not be strong enough for the application methods that we're going to be talking about. So you do need to take a look at the, app, at the concentration of the glyphosate. So in this case, the big words on the, on the uh, label tell you that this 41% glyphosate. But if you were to look at Roundup, a jug of Roundup and read the fine print, you'll find what percent concentrate is that glyphosate. And in, all, in many of those ready to use formulations for say your driveway spraying, it's gonna be like 2%, which is not gonna be strong enough for uh, how we would most effectively use glyphosate for Tree of Heaven. Okay, so let's talk about uh, getting ready to apply some herbicide, um, which means that we gotta get the herbicide in the right kind of container for the application method that we're going to be utilizing. The first container we're gonna work with is a simple uh, squirt bottle. This is um, unlabeled, but I've added a label to it. What I have in here is the triclopyr amine. This is what can be mixed with water to dilute the concentration, but in this case, it's concentrated. It's right out of a jug similar to one of these poured into here. Now I'm gonna add something to this so that it's easier to keep track of what we've done and what we haven't done, which is a dye. There are different kinds of dyes you can buy. These are little tablets, and this is a, a liquid. And now we've got a nice dark blue color here, and that'll make it easier to track what, we're, um, what we've treated. We're going to mix up this, um, this triclopyr. This is the triclopyr ester, which is mixed in an oil uh, base. That can be diesel fuel, which is what we're using here. It's actually on the label. I know that may sound shocking. Uh, or you can use um, crops oil, crop oils and, and other kinds of uh, horticultural oils. It, for the applications that we're going to be demonstrating, both uh, hack and squirt, cut stump, and basil bark, it requires a 20% mixture of this chemical. 20% is four parts to one part. So this is the last of the four parts of oil. Now we're going to do one part of the herbicide. So now we've got the one part herbicide. Pour that in. And mixing is actually one of the more uh, risky factors of using herbicides. So take extra care to uh, do that safely. 
And we'll also put some dye in here. So we've just filled up a backpack sprayer. If you don't have a backpack sprayer, you do have a, something like a garden sprayer, that'll work just fine. Too. Okay, so I'm gonna demonstrate three methods. We're gonna start with the one that is not actually the best, but if you need to get a tree out of the way, and, or if it's in seed and you want to get that seed down and out before it spreads, then this may be a consideration. That's called cut stump. That's simply cutting the tree and treating the stump. So it might be a small tree like this, or a larger tree where you would use a chainsaw. And of course, if we're talking about chainsaw usage, then proper PPE there as well. And then you treat the stump and you need to treat the stump immediately. Um, <clears throat> depending on the product that you use, you might have a little bit more time with your, if you're using glyphosate, you need to treat it immediately. If you're using either of the trickle piers, you have a few, um, you might have upwards of half an hour. But best thing to do is just to go ahead and cut and treat and then you know you've got it uh, taken care of. And the reason that the cut stump doesn't work as well as these other methods is that um, the tree immediately responds and sprouts up. And in fact, you can see this was uh, cut and it wasn't the stump in this case was not applied with, uh, treated with herbicide, but what we just cut came off of this stump probably two or three years ago. And so we've cut those sprouts off now. The, this stump, even though the above ground portion is dead, the root system is very much alive and that's where these sprouts came off of. We just treated these uh, stumps with a little squirt bottle, but it could be done with a paintbrush or, or any other way just to get a little bit of chemical uh, to cover that surface. We wanna minimize the amount of runoff so you don't need to douse it. It just needs us to be on that cut surface. And with this dye, then we can easily see what we've done and what we haven't. Okay, the next method we're going to demonstrate is called hack and squirt. We do have a little bit of a specialized hatchet here. You can use a regular hatchet, but if you grind this down, then it creates a more of a pocket rather than a slice, which will hold the chemical better. So with those hacks, then we'll just fill each pocket with the herbicide. Now the last method we're gonna demonstrate is my personal favorite because it's so easy. You don't have to walk around with anything except a backpack on. However, it does use the most expensive product, the triclopyr ester, which is mixed with oil. It's the same thing that we happen to use here, but you can also use other products here with with hack and squirt or with cut stump. With the basil bark spray, which is simply spraying the bottom foot of the trunk of the tree, you do need to use this particular product, triclopyr ester that's mixed with oil. And it's exactly as simple as it sounds like it might be, where you're just spraying the bottom of the tree. In this case, we've got several sprouts coming off of this one stump. So we're gonna make sure to get all those sprouts and that's it. The fun thing about this, see this happens to be my favorite kind of tree to kill. I'm a forester, I love trees, but this one I love to kill. And this is so fun because in about a week and a half to two weeks, you just start to see it disappear. One of the things I like about this method and the others that we've demonstrated is that there's very little off-target impact. And in this case, uh, you can even use a different kind of wand tip or even a sponge um, or a paintbrush to apply this material. This is just the easiest. And here we do have a little bit of off target spray, but, uh, but it's not much. And so uh, that tree is as good as dead. Just go all the way around the base of the tree, 12 to 18 inches up with the right kind of chemical at the right time of year, which is again, midsummer to late summer. And it's is a very high success rate.